when one hears post-traumatic stress disorder or post-traumatic stress syndrome, they associate it to many other ailments or experiences or coming back from war. How were you able to take that and stretch it to oncology? That's a very good question and a lot of people uh, will ask that because of course when we think of the, it was the DSM-2 that initially, that's the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual um, that the American Psychiatric Institute or Association put out in, uh, I think it was about 1954 uh, or 64, I can't remember exactly, but anyway, it was um, initially called anxiety, uh, general anxiety neurosis or something like that and they clumped all the anxiety disorders together. It was when the DSM-4 uh, text revision in 2000 came out where they said it wasn't just experiencing a traumatic event, uh, event uh, related to say a war or rape trauma syndrome or child abuse syndrome, but it also could be um, any syndrome related to a life-threatening illness where uh, the patient or the, the individual was really frightened for the safety of themselves. And one of the symptoms of post-traumatic stress, which I feel is really applicable to the cancer population, is that of the fear of a foreshortened future. I mean, that's one of the criteria. And the cancer population definitely meets that. And um, some of the researchers that have done a lot of the you know, psychological research in PTSD have compared cancer to combat trauma, where if you're a military person and you're in combat, and even right now we can think of our soldiers in the Iraq war, they have long periods of vigilance where they're not in combat, but they're always feeling in danger they're always on alert. And then suddenly there's combat. And there's that resurgence of the horror and the trauma and the traumatic experience. And then they go back into this state of, uh, say, uh, quiet uh, recuperation, but still vigilant, still on alert for danger. And cancer patients, it's the same way. As we know personally, our journey never ends. And we're maybe in remission, but we always are thinking the enemy could come back and get us. How do we encourage patients to have open discussion with their physicians, with their nurses, regarding post-traumatic stress disorder? And also, they may not be attributing some of the emotional issues and feelings they're having to post-traumatic stress? Absolutely, I would say the majority of individuals who are experiencing it can't identify what they're experiencing. So it really is up to the professional to help them identify it for them. And one of the things that I teach a general oncology nurse who's working, say, even in a busy inpatient unit, it's not your responsibility to treat this, but you're kind of on the first line of the battle. So a simple question, ask your patients some of the criteria that's in the dsm for tr about PTSD. Simple question, are you having nightmares about your experiences with your treatment or your cancer diagnosis? Are you fearful of going into radiation therapy treatments and what is making you scared? Do you get immobilized with fear at different times during the day? Are you, do you have a heightened startle reflex? And those simple questions can help the nurse, the general oncology nurse, identify that referral is necessary. So you named a few of the sort of warning signs. If a patient were to have a checklist, what else would you want to see on there? that would help them identify the fact that, hmm, I really need to reach out for help, but I need to identify these issues with my health care provider. Well, the National um, Coalition um, on Cancer Network, or NCCN, just came out with what they called a distress, 
distress thermometer uh, to help patients identify on an actual thermometer, uh, and a diagram of a thermometer, uh, emotional uh, reactions to help, I and they just uh, sort of clumped anxiety and depression into this thermometer called distress, this distress thermometer. And so actually, that's a very easy tool that can be incorporated in clinical settings. And if any nurse identifies the patient's having anxiety, depression, insomnia, um, again, hypervigilance, uh, feels scared, nightmares, it should come somewhere in these questions with the distress uh, thermometer. And although post-traumatic stress syndrome is not on this, or inherent, mm -hmm. so many comorbid psychiatric illnesses like anxiety, depression, are overlapping symptoms with post-traumatic stress. So they would alert the professional to definitely refer that patient. And then it would be up to the psychiatrist or the psychologist to officially be able to astutely differentiate these symptoms and identify, does the patient have anxiety and post-traumatic stress? depression overlapping with post-traumatic stress.